Hello again. In the previous unit, we saw how the phenomenon of eclipses generated various superstitions in many ancient societies. But as well as superstitions and fears about eclipses, it's also possible to trace the emergence and development of more rational explanations. This came about as a result of certain improvements in ancient astronomy. It may even be said that eclipses are the first celestial phenomenon whose mechanism humankind was able to understand. And it's also very clear to us in modern times that the observation and prediction of eclipses played a key role in the advancement of science. In this video, I'm going to look at some observations and theories of eclipses in the ancient world. By the second millennium BCE, the Babylonians had already recorded a large number of observations of eclipses through the practice of astrology. They had also already noted some periodicity in the return of eclipses. As a result of observation of lunar eclipses, the Greeks were the first to establish the sphericity of the Earth obvious from the circularity of the Earth's shadow on the Moon. But it was not until the Alexandrian period that genuine methods of calculation were developed. This was when the South mechanism, that is the cycle of Sun and Moon eclipses, was determined with some accuracy. Thales's prediction of the solar eclipse in May 584 BCE, as reported by the historian Herodotus, is doubtful. The precise mechanism of eclipses could hardly have been known in those times, especially as solar eclipses are visible only on a very narrow portion of the Earth's surface. What Thales might well have done was to speculate since it is true that solar eclipses were particularly abundant in Asia Minor in his time. But all this remains highly conjectural. From the Alexandrian period to the end of the Byzantine period, the Greeks continued to excel in their calculations regarding eclipses. These were in fact one of their main objectives in astronomy. By the 3rd and the 2nd centuries BCE, Aristarchus of Samos, and then Hipparchus in about 130 BC, had used lunar eclipses for estimating the size and the distance of the Moon. And it was on the basis of eclipses that Hipparchus is believed to have discovered the all-important phenomenon of equinoxial precession. My colleague Godfrey de Calatay will discuss this in a forthcoming video. The first methods to calculate eclipses probably date from about the same period. In the, in the second century CE, Ptolemy marks the peak of Greek astronomy. Using ancient observations already made by the Babylonians, Ptolemy established tables of planetary revolutions and eclipses. These were used in Europe throughout the Middle Ages and even during the Renaissance. The prediction of eclipses by computation also became a very fashionable activity in Byzantium. But it must be said that most Byzantine astronomers did not much bother to observe the phenomenon they had themselves calculated. This is quite typical of the scientific attitude of the Byzantines. They seem to have always given priority to pure reasoning over observation in contrast to the Arabs and the Persians. In the Muslim world, astronomy developed greatly from the 8th and 9th centuries, as, for instance, under the patronage of Caliph al-Mamun. Muslim astronomers started by incorporating foreign knowledge, in particular Indian astronomy and the Greek Ptolemaic system. Then they gradually enriched this material with their, their own works. Many Arab or Persian scientists dealt with eclipses and developed theories about them. Special mention should be made of Al-Khwarizmi's tables in the 9th century, 
of al-Batani at the beginning of the 10th century, and of al-Biruni and Ibn Yunus at the beginning of the 11th century. For instance, al-Batani showed that the farthest distance of the Sun from the Earth varies, and that annular eclipses of the Sun are possible. Al-Biruni and Ibn Yunus excelled in their observations of eclipses. Arab-Persian astronomy, in turn, became a model to Byzantine, Latin, Indian and even Chinese astronomy. To give just a few examples, in Greek texts of the 11th and the 12th centuries, we find many methods of eclipse computation that are borrowed from the Muslims. And Persian's astronomical tables were also used in Byzantium from the end of the 13th century. In Persia, the observatory and the school of Maraga played a key role in this movement of scientific influence. As we have seen in this unit, the study of eclipses throughout history very much reflects improvements in ancient astronomy. In the next two videos, Godfroy de Calatay will be dealing with the doctrine of the Great Year, first in antiquity and then during the Middle Ages. You will discover that eclipses also played an important part in that theory.